We hope you enjoy this clip. Before you watch it, please hit that subscribe button. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong. You called the Malice in the Palace. Yes. I, I was doing a game last year in the playoffs in Atlanta, and there was a, a bomb threat. There was a, a backpack with a fake bomb left outside by the, sta by, I think it was by Dominique Wilkins' statue outside the arena. And this is like my fourth game I've done. And Dave Pash and Monica McNutt basically handled it. But being live on air in a moment like that, and Malice and Palace, of course, is 10 times, 100 times that. What's going through your mind? How are you handling that? when you're prepared and trained to call a basketball game? Well, first off, I had experience because that was during kind of the Nick era where they were in fights all the time. <laughs> so that may have been like my 10th fight of my career that I call. I'm doing blow by blow, not play by play. Um, and what I learned, because the first time you do anything in the business and the first time I called a fight, I, I, if I look back and watched it, I'd be embarrassed because you, you hyperventilate because you're not used to it. But once you call a few, you realize the only thing to do is do it like it's play by play. You're calling, all right, this is happening here. This, so you're just documenting it and you wait till it's over before you start to editorialize and get the emotion in. Um, although on a, something like that, to not get emotional with it going on was, was, you couldn't, that was impossible. So that was part of it. But that's what I, what I try to focus on is just, all right, I'm, I'm calling a basketball game that just happens to be, instead of shots being taken, it's punch being, punches being thrown. So that's, that's the approach to that, and try and stay calm. I know I wasn't calm during it, but that was, that was like nothing I've ever seen. Because what, what made it so scary was the crowd kept surging down. And you just, one, one fight was broken up, another two started. It seemed like it went on for a half an hour when it maybe lasted five minutes. And uh, I remember one sequence uh, when the Pacers, they were getting them off the court. And you know, in, that, in the palace, it was a narrow little place to go to the locker room. So the fans were hanging over and with anything they could get, including full bottles of water and, and cans, they're pelting the players with it. And as I'm watching, there was this woman who was really nicely dressed and she seemed so out of place. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this poor woman, she's in the midst of this chaos. And all of a sudden she gets this look on her face and she takes out a bottle and throws it down. And, and what I'm thinking is this woman in her entire life, she would never do anything like that, but she got caught up in the mob mentality. And that's what was scary about that night is that the, like the crowd almost became against what was going on and wanted to defend their honor. It was, I, I was, that was time where it was like, there was a couple of minutes there like this could be one of the worst things I've ever seen. It, it was on a basketball court, but it could have been even worse than that. Subsequently, there was the Nuggets Knicks brawl, which compared to the Malice Palace was not that bad. A lot of people now, I think it's part of the the culture around the nostalgia for '80s and '90s when there were fights. But a lot of people now think NBA players are soft, but <laughs> so much of this has been directed by the NBA. And David Stern, following the Malice Palace, did such a great job of cleaning up the image. I mean, it took years, um, but I, I, I just, I don't think, I don't think players today are soft and I don't think the game is less physical. I actually don't think this at all. And I wanted to get your perspective on this. Like I watch a lot of old games on YouTube. I watched uh, 93 Jordan uh, versus the Suns when he averaged over 40 for that series, I've, you know, I watch eighties Lakers Celtics finals games. And like, I have a hard time saying the game is, is less physical. I'm watching Memphis try to guard golden state last night and Dylan Brooks off the ball, grabbing and holding Steph and pushing and shoving. There was like 17 illegal screens set last night. I think the fouls were harder. You know, I think what was a flagrant is much different. Do you agree with that? I agree with the second part of it because you would commit what today is a flagrant foul penalty to, you're still playing in the game back in the 80s and 90s. I mean, they, they call a, a foul and maybe 
call a, a flagrant, but it's it's you're still playing, and guys commit fouls now that are tossed. Uh, so that part is different. I, I but I do think that it's not as physical be, because the rules have been changed. Now I agree with you a hundred percent. Players aren't soft by any stretch, uh, but they have different regulations that they can use their physical the part of their game. Um, like there was. There were games back in the 90s when the Knicks would play the Heat um, or the Bulls and the Pistons. I mean, the, 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 the kind of fouls in those games, you just can't even come close to now. It's like it's, like it's a different game. So I do think it was much more physical. Um, but the softness is, now that's ridiculous. The players, the, the shape they're in and, and, and how strong they are now with, with all the training they do. Mm-mm. I think the the advantage that offensive players have now um, with the ability, really good ones, know how to initiate contact and draw fouls. James Harden, Joel Embiid. I mean, our game started late last night because they shot 16 free throws or something like that right. in the first quarter. First quarter and, lasted almost an hour. Yeah. 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 And it's, it, it's just, it, it makes it harder to play good defense. And the scoring is way up now. I think some of the scoring being up too is I think teams have figured out let's just use our best players as many possessions as possible. A lot of guys are having career high in usage rates where it used to be your best players would get 28 to 32 percent of of possessions. Now they're getting high 30s possessions. They're putting their teammates in positions to score. But I I just with the space, the rules, I think it's I think it's really hard to get stops. Now teams can do it some of the greatest athletes in the world, but it's it's becoming harder and harder to play good defense. If you look at the defensive rating, you know, compared even to my early in my career, it's it's insane what is the number one defense versus what was the number one defense back then. I in now this is my 31st year. I think it's harder to play defense now in the NBA than it ever has been. We hope you had fun with us today. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button.